Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for a new Databricks video. Today's video is about Delta Casing and PySpark Casing. Both Delta Casing and PySpark Casing achieve similar things, which is to optimize data processing by storing data in memory. So by casing this data, it's easier and faster to retrieve it. The difference between those two is they operate at different levels. PySpark casing allows a data frame to be stored in memory or disk across the worker nodes, while Delta casing is specific to Delta lakes and it is about optimizing read performance on Delta tables by storing the data in memory. Delta casing operates on a file system level, for example, when you read from a Delta table from Databricks file system. I have prepared an example for each case, so stay tuned and let's get down to the nuts and bolts. Okay guys, so let's jump into our Databricks environment. Delta Cache and PySpark Cache serve somewhat similar purposes. They optimize data processing performance by caching, but they operate at different levels and with different underlying technologies and principles. PySpark Cache. PySpark Cache refers to the caching functionality built into Apache Spark, which allows data frames to be stored in memory or a combination of memory and disk across the nodes in a Spark cluster. This means that they, once, data, once the data is cached, subsequent actions on the data can be performed much faster because Spark does not need to reread the data from the original source. On the other hand, Delta Cache is specific to Delta Lake by Databricks. Delta Cache optimizes the read performance of Delta Lake tables by caching the data into the worker node's memory. It's particularly effective when using cloud storage. Delta Cache works at the file system level and is more specific to improving the performance of reads from disk. So the first example is the Delta Cache example. Here the purpose is to create a large data frame. I have provided uh, you know, 1000 as the number of records for this data frame and 20 partitions, but uh, the key here is the concept here is that this data frame should be a very large data frame, more than 1000 records apparently with millions of records. So first let's disable Delta caching and you can do that by using spark.conf.z and then spark.databricks.io cache enabled and provide false right here. So we disabled Delta caching and now let's save this data frame into a delta table. So format delta mode override dot save as table. Give it a second to run. Okay, the table has been created. Now the first execution, so when we read from the, uh, the table from DBFS, directly from DBFS, and then we go by the key column, and uh, we use count here, and then we display the results then it will take more time than when we, are ha we have enabled Delta caching. So let's see what uh, the time taken without Delta cache. So we have, we load the data frame from the Spark table. Then we use start time or uh, time with uh, dot time here for the start time. Then we use the large data frame we group by key and then we use count and then we display the data and then we have the end time so if we scroll down here it took about 6.9 seconds right without delta casing now if we enable delta cache the first thing we have to do is actually populate that cache that means an action is needed to trigger the cache then every subsequent actions will get data from cache. And how can we trigger populate the cache? We can use group by, again, count or collect. Uh, um, you just need an action, uh, basically, right, to populate this cache. So we enabled Delta caching here. As you can see, this is true now. We uh, called an action to populate the cache. And now if we perform the same operation group by key and then count and then display the data, it should take a lot less than before. As you can see, yeah, it took about 0.7 seconds with 
delta caching. The execution time should be significantly reduced thanks to delta cache. The data once accessed is stored locally and further accesses are much quicker. So this is how you can achieve read performance better and improved read performance from delta tables by enabled delta caching. Now, if you are using the latest, uh, uh, the latest clusters, uh, cluster versions, then it's by default enabled. Okay, so let's move to PySpark cache. Now, PySpark cache has the cache method, but also the persist method. And the, the difference between cache and persist is that using persist, you can define the storage level because you can store the data in memory but also on the disk as well so if you have a lot of data and the memory is not enough so the cache method in PySpark stores the data set in memory we are going to create the same uh, data frame here and then we use dot cache method and then we perform actions first to trigger the caching and then reuse the data from the cache and this is how you can do so you have one large data set then you cast the data set then you um, trigger the caching and then you any for any subsequent action takes the data retrieves the data from caching the first action triggers the caching subsequent actions will utilize the cache data speeding up the operation and then we have PySpark persist as you can tell here it's exactly the same thing with uh, the cache method, but the difference is that we specify the storage levels. Now, the persist method is more versatile as it allows you to specify different storage levels. Storage levels determine how and where the data should be stored. Supported storage levels include memory only, disk only, memory and disk, memory only, serialized, serialized storage in memory, and memory and disk and serialized storage in memory and disk so this is uh, how you can use persist now if you have a low, uh, you know large uh, data sets then memory may, may you might run out of memory right so then you can uh, store the data on the disk or on the memory and disk as you can see there are uh, there are options here or you can uh, serialize the data to to use less uh, space, etc., etc., and these kind of things. Now, here is the same example using persist, and here we specify the storage level, which is memory and disk. We achieve the same thing, but the only difference is that we define we can define the storage level. Persist is helpful if the data set is too large to fit in memory. If the data exceeds the memory capacity, it spills over to the disk. So CAS, the CAS method here, the CAS method is a simplified, a simplified version of persist, right? A simplified version of, of persist. Now, so if you use CAS, the CAS method, as it is being used here, this is similar to persist memory only. So if this thing here, this one, persist storage level memory only is with the same with the cache method here. So this is the only difference. This is it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now that now you can tell the difference between delta caching and PySpark caching and between PySpark caching, the caching, the cache method and the persist method. Right? It's pretty simple. It was a very quick video to understand all those uh, different types of caching that we have on Databricks. If you like the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.